G'day, I'm Scotty Tucker, that damn Aussie pond guy, here to show you some tips, tricks and products that will make managing your pond or dam a whole lot easier. If you want to learn more about all things dams and ponds, then give us a call, shoot us an email or click on subscribe. In this video, we'll be looking at the Aerolator Aquarium Commercial Aerator. Let's get into it. The Aquarium Commercial was originally designed for high load waste water ponds, but it's also commonly used in irrigation ponds that also need aeration. Uh, especially without spray drift. This unit doesn't create spray drift. So if you're using reclaimed water in an irrigation pond situation and you don't want the risk of uh, pathogen, potentially pathogenic uh, water spraying her out on your golf course, for example, they're a great use for that as well. They replace large power hungry aerators, some of the ones that have been in sort of treatment plants since the 80s and 90s and the reason they're good at replacing these units is because they're small, lightweight and modular. So that means that you can have the same amount of horsepower uh, or kilowatts in a pond but spread that out in amongst multiple units and that means that you can turn multiple units on and off, you can have all of them running, less of them running based on your need and your power consumption. Uh, they move a hell of a lot of water. The two horsepower unit moves around 4,600 litres per minute and then up to the, the five horsepower units around moves around 8,500 litres per minute. So they move a truckload of water. Uh, they're not just a, an aeration tool, they're also an excellent mixer and that's very important in wastewater treatment ponds, in uh, you know, wastewater ponds, abattoir ponds, this sort of thing where you've got a high organic load. It's no good just getting oxygen in the water, you've got to actually move that oxygen around the pond. So this thing is a really outstanding mixer as well as aerator to get that oxygen rich water uh, around in the pond. Uh, they're available in two horsepower, three horsepower and five horsepower in both single and three phase. And we can do pretty much within reason any, any, cable, length, any cable length that you require. So let's have a look at the unit in a little bit more depth. Here we have the underside of the unit. You can see that the propeller is protected first of all by this uh, cage, this stainless steel cage, just to stop any large debris from getting in there and damaging the, uh, the prop. And the prop itself is a 316 grade uh, stainless steel, very well manufactured, precision engineered. And what happens with this unit is that the water gets thrown up, it hits this diffuser, it comes, comes around, it's a bit hard to see the diffuser there, but you've seen that in the other camera angle that we just had. Uh, hits the diffuser and then comes down again. So it's one of the reasons why this unit is such a good, not just aerator, but also mixer, because that really fast, high flowing, well oxygenated water goes straight down and then goes all the way down for uh, layers and layers and mixes and, and, and moves the water around, which is very important, especially in wastewater. Uh, but so you've you got the 316 grade uh, prop, you've got a uh, stainless steel uh, mount for the uh, for the motor itself and the motor itself is a, a 316 grade stainless steel Franklin Electric motor. Franklin Electric are one of the world renowned motor manufacturers. The One of the key things with this motor compared to other similar aeration equipment is that these motors are not oil filled in the sense that you don't need to uh, do oil changeovers or seal changeovers which is very important because a lot of other aeration equipment that do use oil filled motors that require changing mean that they require regular ongoing maintenance and it's just a design thing, the other equipment's fine, it's, a, it's, it's not a, uh, uh, a sort of um, a detriment to the equipment if a piece of equipment is using an oil filled motor, it's just that it means that you've got to maintain it more often and unfortunately human nature is to forget about things and put them out there and leave them so if something's out in the middle of the dam and it needs regular maintenance and, and people forget or they just don't do it then eventually that equipment fails. So this equipment here, the, the Franklin motor, not requiring, requiring oil replacements is a very big feature for the, uh, for the aerolator equipment. It's also a cost advantage because uh, the, the lifetime cost of the unit is significantly less because some of these oil kits and changeovers can cost you, you know, upwards of several hundreds of dollars to thousand to dollars or something like that to do a, uh, to, uh, to, to get the equipment, to get the parts, to get the labour, to actually do that maintenance. So some of that type of equipment might be a little bit cheaper to buy up front, but in the long term it ends up costing you more because of the maintenance requirements. So this, this sort of unit with the non-oil filled motor will actually save you money in the long run. If we take a look at the float, it's quite a rigid unit. It's square in shape and that's for increased stability on the water. It's actually foam filled, so there's a little plug there where during point of manufacture, 
the, the float itself is not left hollow, it's filled with a polystyrene and that just essentially makes it unsinkable even if this was in a highly unlikely event to be whacked with something so powerful that it's going to uh, put a hole in the unit, it's never going to sink because it's filled with foam anyway. Uh, it's also UV stable, it's got four tethers, one in each corner where you can tie off your, your ropes. Uh, or your anchoring materials and you can see here that there's a recess for the uh, the cable to run out and what's a good idea is that when you run the cable out and then drop down to the uh, to the bottom of the dam and it runs out along to shore is use this point and actually cable tie the cable to the float itself reason for that is that if someone were to pull that cable from shore which you should never ever do then at least it's not going to be pulling on the uh, on the electrical disconnect on the um, on the unit itself. Another key point with the float is that on the inside, on the inner circle of the float itself, where the equipment drops in, there's these anchor points all the way that around that which are moulded into the float. And what that allows you to do is that if you do get an excessive amount of uh, debris potentially getting sucked into the uh, to the main prop then you can put what's called a, a trash guard, an aftermarket trash guard, which you can make out of uh, metal, you can make out of plastic, um, inch by inch sort of mesh, something like that, just to stop shopping bags, big particles, that sort of thing from, uh, from getting into the unit. Something that we don't really use that often uh, and we don't necessarily recommend that you need it, but it's just sometimes you get those situations where it's a, a really incredibly nasty piece of um, uh, location where you've got a high risk of, of stuff coming in there but uh, it does allow you to do that if you uh, if you need to at a later date. The motor and the motor assembly simply drops into the float you can see there there's a recess that it takes the uh, the float arms and the downward force of the unit uh, it's constantly pushing down so it just keeps it in place you don't need any special fixing tools or equipment to actually keep it into the float which also makes it easy for removal you can actually move these drop these in and out of the float without any lifting equipment. If you do decide to use lifting equipment for whatever reason, there is a, uh, a, a couple of lifting points on the, on the top of the, the diffuser as well. And you can see there, there's the electrical quick disconnect this one's using. There is a separate video on the Aerolator electrical quick disconnect, so I'd encourage you to, to watch that one and get a better idea for what that is. Mm -hmm.